morning. I like to start my morning by uh, removing my Pot County lowering kit. Ah oh, yes, the classic, if it don't sit low enough, just put a couple hundred pounds on the front. That's adjustable suspension, baby. We don't need no airbags or hydraulics. If we want it lower, we'll just stack some cinder blocks. And if we want it picked back up, ready for the mud bogs, we'll take them back out. That's how it works. What in the lift kit is going on here? Well, don't worry. We're about to get to the bottom of what's going on there. And I have a theory, and I'll share that theory. But if you're new here, uh, this is our 61 Chevy wagon we've been building. We pulled this thing out of a salvage where it had been sitting since 1970. And just last week, we actually got the body back on the chassis. Uh, we're doing all new everything on the bottom side. She's got a nice patainer to her, but we fixed all the actual rust and rot and we've blended it back in. Like our tailgate, most of that uh, whoop, there down is all rattle can. And inside is a whole lot of new floor. Luckily that thing ain't any longer. I'd probably been doing a whole lot more. So last week, like I said, we got it back together and uh, a disappointing occurrence happened. And that being how high the front end sitting. Uh, the back, I wasn't planning on lowering a lot. I thought it was gonna sit a little lower than that, uh, but the front sitting like a damn gasser. So that is number one priority this go around. But also this go around guys, uh, we're just gonna, whatever we can start doing that contributes to getting this thing back together, whether it might be, be some bumper action, the back needs shocks, but we're gonna lower it more. We still got some brake stuff to do. We got stuff we can throw on the engine. My, oh my, oh my. Looks like our transmission cross member came in. We got more brake stuff. We've got finned valve covers. I don't know, we may have to run the oversprayed chrome ones. We definitely have plenty to do with the goal being to obviously get this thing closer to being on the road. Uh, so we're about to hop on the front end real quick. I want to tell you guys, thank you for the uh, support on the merchandise. We released that limited edition design that's going to go on this wagon last week. And the t-shirts, y'all bought those things up in like a matter of hours. Blew my mind. Uh, the fastest we've had stuff sell off the website in a long, long, long time. I think we do have a few hats still in stock. Last week we released the new Yeehaw design right there. And with that, we're releasing the new Yeehaw sticker. So I forgot and then think about this. Now we've got the old design of stickers and anyone who's buying the Yeehaw shirts, we're gonna throw these in with those shirts until we run out. I don't know how many stickers we have. About that many's worth. And we'll probably phase out the Yeehaw on fire. So if we run out of these, we'll probably start throwing these in. So if you're getting the, the new Yeehaw shirts, we're gonna throw you in a, a old Yeehaw sticker. She looks good on a toolbox, baby. Toolbox, bead roller, piece of equipment, back window, whatever tickles your fancy. We've got other odds and ends. We also restocked all the kiddo stuff people were asking. So, big thank you to you guys for all the support there. If you want some, just head on over to puddinsfabshop.com. It is the only place to get official merchandise from us. Now, speaking of official, I'm officially about to put a whip in on this front end. Or it's going to whip me. Someone's getting whipped. Just push until you hear clunk. Eh, eh, stop, halt, quit. Don't go any further. We're parked near where we started. <laughs> Told you someone's gonna get whipped that keeps messing with me. I ain't got the patience today. I ain't putting up with your games. Did y'all see how easy I just popped that off? Uh, that's not a good sign. These are repopped caps. Those are aftermarket stillies. Obviously they're not meshing well together, so I might have to look at that on the workbench some and see if we can figure out how to make these hold better. I promise if you look up the word cheap in the dictionary, you will not see a picture of those caps. Okay, I, had to, I almost had to sell lefty to afford these things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, the good news is those ones felt funky going on, but they're not coming off as easy. I'll just see if I can't scratch them up here. Woo! 
professional. With the caps out the way, we can bring out old Squeaky to play. <laughs> Put that horn somewhere. You ever heard two dogs yakking after getting stuck together? That's what that sounds like to me. My favorite way to start work is just with backtracking. It's my favorite. But it's part of it, guys. If you're watching any car stuff, and there's never backtracking or mistakes or wrong parts or this or that. They're editing it out or you're watching television where it's all fake. Now we basically get to disassemble what all we've got going on there because we've got to get that spring out of there. And we got to be careful doing that because I guarantee you all that spring's got pressure. How much pressure? All the damn pressure. Uh, what I think's going on, here's my theory guys. I looked up, why am I bending over to talk to y'all? <laughs> Welcome class to suspension theories. I'm your professor. Professor Poudin. Years and years of research has led us to this moment for me to present my liftium theorem of why this wagon is sitting like a grave digger. Simply because of bad manufacturing. You see a coil spring has a pigtail where it ends and usually manufacturers have an area where the pigtail is supposed to sit for maximum setting in there however due to poor manufacturing it has been seen before that springs do not always index correctly the sitting in flush in properly we actually demonstrated that on the rear of the springs when they did not sit correctly and we trimmed off about an inch to make it sit right through ponderment and the internet web's research i had discovered that many manufacturers for these cars of lowering springs had several reviews thus stating that they had to trim on the pigtails because they did not index correctly. I've seen this review from cheap springs to more expensive springs. Similar people with similar problems. When we assembled the front end, we compressed the spring a lot and we indexed it off the lower pigtail, thus never seeing the upper and how it's sitting in the K member. Is the K member okay? If Putin's third law is true, then we shall be able to theoretically proceed by taking this apart, cutting the spring till it indexes correctly, then possibly removing another coil so we get this thing hammered down on the ground or something like that anyhow. Got my surgery kit. Let's see if we can't tear this baby apart. Now we could probably get away with maybe not disconnecting something like our tie rod here. Uh, but I would rather just disconnect it when it's easy to disconnect instead of getting in a bind and then needing to disconnect it. And it'll get disconnected quicker if I could pick the right size socket. <laughs> Luckily, we ain't gonna fight no threads or nothing like that. All the stuff is new. A few love taps on the side and smack that down out of there. We'll pull these sway bar end links out the way. Ain't no sense in having them do the wang dangle hanging out there. Last video, we'll build the wang dangle wagon. Y'all know what the wang dangle is, right? They were saying that's how them birds reproduce. <laughs> then off camera, he said, could you imagine having to fly around? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't say I've thought about that one, Bill. Go ahead and disconnect our brake hose. Properly store our hardware. Uh, what else? We'll pull our shock out. Wang Dangle's ears must have been burning. I talked about you a minute ago and here you come pulling up. Too so, stiff. Put a straight axle in it and you're done. <laughs> Orange County International Raceway. I put in that last video, uh, we're gonna do a little interview with you, whatever, and people's ready. <laughs> ready? <laughs> I'm not ready. It won't be so mysterious anymore. Remember curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> no. God bless America. 
That whole ball joint spinning. What the French toast? Oh, got it. Hammered down on that. Made sure all the weight was off that. So I don't know if maybe that seated a little after. I don't know if it would have. Well, if it did seat, I don't know, something changed. <laughs> now, before we start to lower this down, we wanna get a chain on this to something because that spring's gonna have the tension. Don't mind me, just getting chained. I can get diddly without gloves on. And I may not be the safest person in the world, but I do try to pay attention to the basics. We wanna keep our fingers. We wanna keep our head, the basics. And we're coming down with it, slowly but surely. Honestly, I think we're gonna have to pry it out of there. I doubt it falls out. Oh, maybe it will. Oh yeah, see, she wanted to pop out. But my chain said, hell no, you ain't going nowhere. That wasn't chained and Bill was standing right there by chance, he may have lost a foot, took it clean off. <laughs> Bill would play hell trying to do his mile long bike rides with a peg leg, I guarantee it. That'd make good content. We'll save the driver's side for when he's here where we can get that foot off of him. Yeah, I think it's a little long. <laughs> oh boy. I think it was sitting right there where the paint scratched. So for right there, and we slowly turn to the left, right there, that spring just dropped, and I mean a whole lot. It's kind of hard to tell what was going on in there. I don't know if maybe I had that rotated back some, so that was out. When I eagle eye it, honestly guys, it's looking like it indexes pretty good in there where both pigtails should end about where they're at. So yeah, maybe they sent us wrong springs. Maybe these are for the big block cars. Uh, maybe it's not. Well, obviously it ain't a lower end spring. With that extra weight in the front, everything felt pretty good. So I think like suspension wise, it felt good. So I think we just cut these suckers down. We make them work for us. By the time we get all of our engine accessories on, front bumpers on, stuff like that, that extra weight, it'll give us, it felt like it was gonna ride like a damn cloud. Now I just gotta decide where I wanna cut this sucker. <laughs> we could cut it here for a little bit or mama didn't raise no punk. We can just hop all the way down to here and lop off a big old thing. We're not gonna cut that straight. We're gonna cut it at an angle where it helps this sit flat in the lower control arm. So from that line, let's say we go this way half an inch and back this way three quarters of an inch. So with that line, I'm gonna come across and intersect it with kinda a straight line to create a flat kinda taper. That way that kinda sits flat on the control arm. There we go, baby. Now, usually guys, especially on a nicer build like so, I try to order lower in springs. I'm usually not, hey, let's just cut them because we can, depending on the level of build. However, cutting them like this, I've never had a problem. Like our Yeehaw here, I've cut the springs on it the same way. And yeah, we've driven this thing all over down to Dallas and back, a couple road trips in it. And I've been driving it for, boy, we're going on two years with the Yeehaw this year. I know cutting springs ain't for everybody, uh, but that's a, that's how I do it and I have good luck. Now, before we can assemble that, I've got to address, well, it ain't really an elephant because I guarantee you probably 97% of the viewers don't know anything about it. Uh, but there's a couple people who keep commenting. I'm not like calling them out or nothing. They're right. Uh, I'm just going to give my theory on this upper ball joint. Theoretically, I installed these things wrong. <laughs> that ain't a theory. That's a fact. Uh, these come from the other side out. Now these aftermarket ones, those rubber boots are so big that you can't drop it in from that way. But I think you're actually supposed to drop the ball joint from the top side, put the boot on on the bottom side. If you don't know that and you ain't paying attention, it's very easy to bolt it in underneath there. Now, since we're in here, we're gonna swap them around. If we have no reason to get in here, guys, I would not swap those. I see people saying it's unsafe. 
and I've seen people say that that could be part of my problem of why the front was sitting lifted, and absolutely not, guys. You could put a ball joint that long on this sucker, and as long as it tightened up down in there at the bottom side of the taper, it'd shove this way up like that, but it ain't gonna lift your car, I promise you. And I promise you, the possible 3 8 difference that this ball joint is doing is not throwing off geometry in any way that's dangerous or anything like that. The reason I know that, guys, and the reason I'm like just explaining this, because I've they said that, I remember taking them out the other way, I looked, I was like, dang, they're right. So out of curiosity, I go back and look at my 64 that I built back in the day with Air Ride, and guess how I installed those upper ball joints? You damn right they were installed just like that. And uh, that thing had like 12 inches of travel on the front suspension. And I played with these switches everywhere I went. I traveled all over Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas in that thing. I'm not joking, daily driven, three and a half years, playing with switches everywhere I went. Never had a problem. And I would bet if you have an X-frame car and the front end's been rebuilt and you're not the one who did it, I'd be curious how many people go look because I've been keeping an eye now and I've seen I've seen some nice shops and I'm paying attention and guess where their ball joints are. <laughs> They're on the bottom side too. So we have to fuel my curiosity and see if we pull those, drop them in from the top side, see if the boot goes on from the bottom. That's how the factory, it came. Honestly, I don't think it matters. I just wanted to give my three cents on it. That's a little more than two cents. Also, any debate's always good for the comment section. <laughs> Help the old algorithm. And it will be noted in history that on this day, four Puddin's Fab Shop viewers rejoiced as he flip-flopped ball joints. <laughs> yeah! The boot does sit on there like it's manufactured for that. Going up. <laughs> She's gonna be hammered. We're gonna leave this side mocked up for now. Cut her down, put her back in. Coming down. She's coming down. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good right there. That right there is damn near perfect. It'll settle a little. We get more weight on it, guys. That's pretty dang low right there. That's what we want to see. By the time we throw our weight up here, the rest of the stuff, a couple hundred pounds, and uh, stuff settles nice and low. You naughty little wagon sitting over there just teasing me guys i think that's perfect i've just been sitting here staring at it punked i sent it to mortsky he said that ain't enough to slam it when i showed him what i cut off but pff, what's he know it thinks lifts are called hoist they're obviously called lifts that's why they're called two post lift four post lift not a hoist but you know he thinks he knows everything i know we need to get the back lower as well now the rear springs they're gonna sit on our control arms but i didn't put the shocks on yet so I think if we jack the frame up high enough, those things may fall out of there. I figured that'd pop out of there pretty easy. Now the back, I'm not sure how much I actually want to do on it. Kind of went for a home run on the front. Right here, we're going to go for a base hit, possibly. We'll cut it, and if it ain't enough, we'll do more. Y'all know what? I lied looking at this. We're just going to go for the uh, two-coil cut. Forgot to turn y'all on. Oh. <laughs> Sounded a little not correct. I forgot to turn the camera on. Uh, I did slice our other one. Let's get these suckers popped back in.
Oh. Let's have a little look-see here. Woo, baby. That right there is exactly what I wanted to see. It's probably hard for y'all to tell, but the rocker is still running uphill a little bit. So it's got a nice little rake to it. And boy, that fatty McFat fat, it is tucked in there. Kind of rolled her back and forth. I don't think anything's rubbing neither. That's all she needed was a quick little trim job this morning. I can't help it guys. We're just gonna set these on real quick. Oh man, guys, this camera ain't doing it justice. I'm telling you right now. That being squatted down like that is exactly what this thing was missing. The thing looks tough. Ball joints are flipped, coil springs are clipped. She sits as low as shit. Uh, we're ready to tighten everything up. So I went to tighten up that upper ball joint uh, with this max down all the way. It ran out of threads. So we need a washer on there basically. Got some of these thick ends, good old thick washer. And I've got a Harbor Freight motivator right there. She comes in one, two, three, four, five, a lot of sizes. Oh, she's tightening up now. Washer worked perfect. Uh, everything's good. Put the brake line back on. We'll get some weight on it for this, except the shock. I'm kind of disappointed in y'all because I made a mistake. And uh, yep, yeah, y'all, you did catch the upside down ball joints. Oh. Uh, but no one caught this. Kind of disappointed in you. What's wrong with that shock right there, huh? Look a little closer. Look a little closer. Y'all didn't think I'd forget. Oh. <laughs> Pretend like y'all didn't see that. Y'all didn't think I'd forget, did you? I almost did, and this thing would have rode like a fat raccoon with a ass dragon, okay? It would have been in bad shape. This is 100% not true, but as soon as you install these Yeehaw stickers on your shocks, it gives your shock the heart and spirit of the Yeehaw. <laughs> She's gonna ride so much better. Guaranteed to ride as smooth as the Yeehaw. You just slap that on there and uh, yeah, results may vary, okay? Oh man, I should have put her on there this way so when you looked underneath the front, you could see it. Good thing I don't sell crappy stickers. I've had people tell me they bought a new vehicle and swapped all the stickers over from the back window. <laughs> there we go. Now they'll be able to read it. That is not good. Apparently we missed the hole. That happens from time to time. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what day it is, what week, what month, guys. There's no reason it's should have taken as long as it has to get this front together and it still ain't together i have everything together besides the sway bar and if you install the single tube they send there's just supposed to be one in there then that hits that which is no good well i stacked two of them and that appears to be the right length i had bought factory replacement ones so there's a tube in there and it's a lot longer so this tube's too long but we know two of them's the right length so we're going to use them to mark this and then we're gonna take the slice and dice to it. Right there. So much for sending them back to get my monies back. Honestly, if it gets this front end together, I don't give a damn. This bolt's too long. This one at that length's too short. We need to cut just a quarter inch off that. That'll give us enough threads to get uh, the nut started. Oh yeah, that should be just about perfect. That was rubbing. Now we got a fingertips clearance in there, which is good. Man, I wish I had a tube of grease. Damn, Bill. Let's have my columns smoke through. That's good. Got the jacks underneath the lower A arms, kind of like having the wheels and tires on where there's weight on this bad girl. And uh, yeah. For that tight, uh, I'm about to have to leave anyhow, so when I'm out, I'm gonna get a tube of grease where we can looby dooby this all up. I'm hoping this smoked chicken bill just gave me a don't looby dooby up my insides, if you know what I mean. I sat there like a brave boy, did what I had to do, 
got done letting him give me a sticker. Well, the joke's on them, because I own my own sticker line. So I give myself a sticker. That nurse lady was on this side, and I looked this way, and I had a conversation with the wall, and I just told her, when you're ready, you do what you do, I'll be over here talking to this wall, don't you worry about me. <laughs> also, got us some looby dooby for the grease gun. Sucker tried to slam back on me, but it didn't know I had Spider-Man reflexes. <laughs> God bless it. Just came unthreaded, we're back in business. That seems like a good spot for a grease gun. Thank goodness, uh, front is D, you and she's done <laughs> i was looking at that going that sucker's like that what in the alignment uh yeah i may have forgotten to tighten those up two will do now here at the back obviously with her doing the uh wine dangle back here uh, we need to put some shocks on if we don't, we may bounce them springs clean out of there. Now that it's lowered and we know we're gonna sit about right in here, we can check side to side of our rear end. We'll do that with the pan hard bar and that we can adjust it, I mean. If it's this way, we can take it that way. And if it's that way, we can take it this way. Boop, boop, boop. And other than that, it should only be uh, tightening up the suspension bolts as far as the, uh, the hardware. This thing keeps bouncing. I'm gonna get some hydraulics for it. Coming down. Coming down. <clears throat> this thing's gonna tow a trailer house now. It's kind of a pain to show, but I got the top ones tightened up. Now down here, we can just put them on the studs because I gotta get two nuts for these. I should have just showed this side. Way easier to show and get to. Did a little digging around and uh, boy howdy, look what I found. I already had some new nuts here. Oh yeah, she ain't so bouncy now. She ain't like a trampoline anymore. Next, since we've got the axle on jack stands where we've got weight on it back there, we want to check her side to side. We ain't even got to measure nothing crazy at first. We can go pretty caveman. By caveman, I mean my fingertips just kind of grace, gracefully wrap through there, almost perfect. On this side, but what about this side? This side, I can't get my fingers through there. I can in certain spots, but not all the way through. And that SOB's dang near perfectly level right now. Boy, here we go with another quantum theorem. Go! Oh. But it didn't know I had Spider-Man reflexes. Pay attention, class. Say that's our pan hard bar right there. If we're sitting level, how we're sitting right there, we actually want this kind of shoving the rear end, favoring this side a hair. This is the back view of the car, by the way. So this is the, the frame side of the mount, and this is the rear end side. I don't know why I drew a square there. <laughs> we want it favoring this way because as our suspension starts to travel up and down, as it travels up, this arm, because it pivots over here, it would actually do kind of an arc, right? It's gonna arc back, meaning it's gonna pull it that away. And if we get buck nasty and we start jumping stuff to reveal the yeehaw shocks on the back, as it curves down this way, it's gonna start pulling it that away. So you actually wanna adjust it favoring this side of here where there's a little deflection there, but then as it travels up and down, it starts moving back the other way. You, and you, you could probably really calculate this. We're not gonna get that crazy into it. Uh, but what you're trying to do is make sure you get, you, you're distributing them. I'm not making sense. You're distributing the amount of deflection the best way possible. Because if we shove it that away here, as it goes up a little bit, 
it's going to come back to say where there's no deflection say right in there if we go past that then you get a little deflection that's right in there and vice versa down this way uh you're you're flexing that bushing a pretty close to even amount i don't know if this is making sense but let's say that's your pan hard bar now well the more that swoops down the more it's going to curve it that away so instead of being up in here or whatever this is already curving pretty hard then because levels up in here you don't start curving to up in here so now if you're traveling as it went up it would shove it that way quite a bit and as it come down it would really pull it that that away a lot so i think i made this confusing i don't think that really made sense I'm gonna go adjust on the thing because I kind of know where it needs to go from just messing with these things. You can really overthink this stuff a lot if you want, kind of like my opinion on the ball joint things. But just know there's a ton of cars out there on the road right now with simple bolt-on air ride that not one person's even worried a bit about where they're paying hard bar set up. And guess what? They're going down the road just fine. If you do know how to do the fine tuning on stuff, we're going to save ourselves a little bit of bushing wear, uh, even though it would probably never wear out anyways, but no more than what we're doing here. Long story short, that sucker needs to come this way. I know that made sense. I'm just turn that sucker by hand. I can still get my fingers in there. Uh, it's a lot tighter than it was, which is good. Oh yeah, we basically traded sides here, but it does favor this side just a hair, which is exactly what we want, because I think as we travel up and down, it's gonna pull it a little that away and a little that away. Lock her down. Ugh. Decided to hit y'all with the black bibs today. Uh, I ain't wore these in a, oh, oh my, oh my, oh my, my, oh my. There anything else hidden in these pockets? <laughs> I got paid 60 bucks just to get dressed today. We'll take that, put it in our other hidey hole here. Yesterday after tightening the pan hard bar, I got my 15 16 wrench and went around and tightened all the rear control arms where everything back there's tight. Doing all that took me way longer than I thought it would guys, but you know how that crap goes. I mean, on the sway bar, it was 30 seconds of content. Realistically, I fought that thing for 45 minutes because i pulled it in and out like three times trying to figure out uh anyhow at the beginning of the video i think i said someone's getting whipped about to put a whip in on this front end or it's gonna whip me someone's getting whipped well it was me i'm the one who got whipped yesterday this thing whipped me all over we're moving on and i think we're gonna move on to some brake action we've built a few of the lines we still got to build a line up here uh, but we're gonna first start with looking at our master cylinder booster uh, all that kind of stuff proportioning valve that was the other word Pro words that's two words not a word proportioning valve is the other thing we'll look at up here so here's our lines coming up what the heck is this who knows oh i know what that is trash Oh, baby, I made it. Between that and finding $60, today is going to be a good day. Yep, I can feel it in there. All right, as far as our master, oh, <laughs> not the wiring. I wasn't planning on messing with any of the wiring. I guess we are now. Well, that whole thing just crunched plumb apart. But our master here, we already have the line disconnected. So we've got our four bolts up here we need to get. There's some skeet skeet right on top of the old flame locker there, so we'll just use it. The stuff gets really cold to use a shock freeze technology. So basically we're gonna freeze our nuts off. I know y'all see that sizzling. Oh yeah, she's a little loosey-goosey. Underneath the dash, here's our pedal. You can see a pin going through there. So we gotta get it out. Get this cotter pin. Hey, y'all know some people don't call these cotter pins? Nope, some people call them split pins, I guess. Which makes sense. Can't remember where, it's been a few people, I think. 
maybe from the uk is that what y'all call them over there split pins or who knows what what, what do y'all call them well, i don't know about over there in the uk though because they call like like a biscuit over there is a cookie and a biscuit over here means we're gonna get some gravy on it you know what i mean uh-huh i've seen the great british bacon show they be making some wild stuff on there here's a cake it is orange chocolate cherry marmalade with the raspberry jam with the strawberry spread and i'm like what in the flavors you got going on there what happened to just damn chocolate they bake with more secret ingredients than damn dr pepper it's got like 23 flavors why are we talking about bacon she's free she's a wagner and lockheed Scrape off that old gasket. And we're gonna start to look at some components. Got our booster. But it didn't know I had Spider-Man reflexes. Got our master. We're gonna have to get some paint on that. Got our adapters. Got our proportioning valve and some other stuff. And I've got another proportioning valve. Just gonna pop our retaining clips off. Pop the lid off. For prep work, we're gonna hit it with the basics. A bright clean prep job. That cast should grab the paint pretty good. Uh, some of the areas just feel oily. Just remember, anything is going to look better than when you just throw it on there and let it flash rust like i see people do i don't know that that's a pet peeve of mine new booster all new lines nice rusty master cylinder just paint the thing actually that ain't none of my business do whatever you want that masking tape did not want to stick to that but gorilla tape's always up for a challenge Oh, that's pretty good. All right, let's get her in the paint booth. I'm gonna start with a little light coat. Oh shit, it's going down, guys. They're throwing down. We got FedEx and UPS about to go at it. I don't need no fights out oh, here. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, here they come, they're gonna squabble. <laughs> Y'all have a good one, man. Thank you. I told them, y'all get out of here, take that turf or elsewhere. None of them want to compete with the Yeehaw anyhow. Dang, UPS. That thing's always getting buck nasty. FedEx sounds like it's about to plumb fall apart. We'll take a little gander in our bag of goodies. Well, we got all the extension kit there. How long you need it? And our adapter plates. This is going to get us from the firewall. What in the hell? Why are these suckers at an angle? These things are doing the wang angle. Please don't tell me this is gonna make this thing pop a wheelie off my firewall. You put it on there like that, that sucker, we're gonna have to have a cow hood for this. Well, I guess if you look from over here, it don't look so crazy. There's a lot of them on the internet that got them, so let's try a mock up. If I ain't happy with it though, I'll cut it up. I ain't scared. Hmm, it faces up a little bit, but I could probably live with that. This setup's gonna take up more room than the damn engine does. We gotta figure out our bracket for a proportioning valve, because it should go on as the master goes on. Now, if you're curious why I have two proportioning valves, that's because this one is for a disc drum setup, and this one here is for a disc disc setup. I think that goes like that-ish. Shove that in there. Don't forget that. Run your nut down. Little mock up. Don't get buck nasty and torque it because we gotta we gotta get lines going from here to here and here to here. Hey, that actually lines up pretty good. And you can make these, but boy, they are not fun. Back in the day when I was doing the travel all, I lost those little lines. I made them. The very next day I found them in the bag.
Run those down just enough where they barely snug. Then we're gonna snug these units. Yep. Then we'll snug our brake lines. Oh, last one there. She should be good to go. Now we were very well on our way to making this a high speed race car. We ditched 20 pounds of coil by cutting it off all four corners. Unfortunately, we're back to tugboat status because we're putting on a 40 pound brake assembly. So I put one of our extension kits on and we gotta go for a mock up. So we actually look like we're gonna be pretty close right in there. Now that ain't completely flush on the firewall, but it's probably got a half inch it could come back. And knowing that, I think I can predict where I need to thread this. They give this little boot that I'm sure is supposed to pop into the firewall. Now maybe they plan to put on the firewall and let this stick through like this. But I was looking at something. But that there is uh, open to elements. And if we stuck that on there backwards and shoved it up in there, and that meets up to the firewall, That'll seal the firewall and it may help keep a little moisture out of there, if it works. Zippity doo da, zippity day. This big ass thing's gonna be in my way. How much better y'all think this thing will stop? Woo, hot damn. Looks like she clears by a good inch or two. I do have that slit as high as it'll go as well. That way we get more room underneath it. Now here inside, holy crap. I think we nailed it perfect. Y'all seen me eagle eye it, adjust it on the bench, put it right in and just got lucky it looks like. Right at the perfect spot. Couldn't ask for much more than that. Told y'all earlier today was gonna be a good day. Pop in the British Bacon Show split pin. This split pin has a grape flavor with a thin layer of chocolate followed up by a orange cheesecake. Holy cow, guys, you know how easy that was? Y'all have got to understand the Datsun, the internationals, no one makes crap for them. So every time I'm doing the floors, we're making them. Every time I adapt it to stuff like that, I got to build the bracket the brackets and the linkages and all that stuff. Don't get me wrong, I've had to modify some of this stuff, but overall, it's so much less work than when you build uh, something oddball like I usually do. Like on this sucker, I had to build that adapter plate that worked with that to that. Of course, our steering's gotta come through it. Then down there, we had to mount our proportioning valve down yonder, just cause I wanted to keep it cleaner up here. I might have to clean this sucker up before the car show. April 15th in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, I'll be there. We'll have the travel all the truck, both box trucks, the Datsun King, and the Yeehaw. I may even have a surprise guest with me. It could be Slick, it could be Bill, it could be Pudding Pop. So I ain't gonna tell you. A wise man once told me curiosity killed the cat. Remember curiosity killed the cat? Don't mind me. Just hopping in for a little quick access. You can have all the fanciest tools in the world, but sometimes you just need a wrench. Yeah, Waylon Jennings. Set that there to keep dust out the air. That wind is getting buck nasty. We're gonna blow some trees over. Now on our proportioning valve, this is gonna go to the rear. We got one coming out the bottom right here. That needs to go down there to our driver's side brake line. And then this one that goes over to our passenger side, it needs to come to right here. I don't know if I have the tube nut for this, uh, but we definitely do for the uh, smaller one. I'm trying to get this line out of the way of our uh, steering column. Like how that looks right there. Now we need to put a swirly cue on it. I like to do too, uh, it gives you slack. It also, I've been told, and I don't know if this is true, but if there's any movement between this and the frame, the body and the frame, that gives it some flex. Kind of squeeze that in there and instead of doing two little ones i'm gonna do one decent size this is a little tricky since all this stuff's in here but i think that'll work before we fine tune it we're gonna cut it and flare it the last go around i forgot my damn nut on there don't forget your nuts you know it goes on here after we cut this tube nut what goes on there tube nut goes on there then what goes on there our locking flaring device 
tried to flare it a little more and I cracked it because I did a little more than a little more. That's better. That's what we want to see. Should have done it that way the first time. Should be. Oh yeah, right there's good. Holy cow, about broke my wrist. Had one trash can in each hand and that Windstar weapon made the one do a barrel roll. Hit me like an alligator. <laughs> I don't know if the camera would pick it up. There's so much dirt in the air right now, it's insane. The skyline's Oklahoma red dirt orange right now. Yep. That was a little one. Old Girthy here is really gonna be ornery. Most of the lines that came with this kit looked really worthless. This one may be able to work for us. After a small amount of manipulation in the situation, the bottom side is started, and I'm wondering if we can't just curly cue this straight up into here. Make sure we're still clearing everything. Uh, we'll take that, guys. The back has half been around, mocked up for now. And speaking of back, we're gonna work our way towards the back. What's halfway between the front and the back? The middle. Hey, they use some tie wire. I like their style. What the hell, now we're doing unboxing videos. <laughs> These guys sent me out this. Let's review this product for free. Let's have a look at this rusty, oh my lordy. <laughs> I promise whoever welded that right there is not the same guy who ever welded this side. Look at that booger bull crap right there. You were building a real nice car and you didn't have the means to fix this. I could understand sending that back because you ain't happy with it. Luckily for us, uh, we got the grinder and the welder. We'll grind out a weld at a time, put a pretty one in there. And now I can basically say I fabricated my own trans cross member. They couldn't have done it without me. That's probably what their problem was that day. They forgot to put their welder to sizzle. Instead, they set it to bubble gum. Honestly, it probably would have been all right not doing that, but at least we fixed it. Honestly, if them underage workers overseas are gonna be welding, they need to get better. I give a damn what anyone says. As long as the part is still hot when you rattle can it, powder coat. So as our powder coat dries, we're back under the rig. I didn't have that tight tight. Get our rubber hose off. That should go right in there. I don't know if our clips go. Whoops. Now we need to tighten this into there. Now we can take this back this way and finish it up. Guaranteed that clip ain't going nowhere. Oh yeah. Now we could build lines for our uh, rear end, which I'm realizing was a terrible plan to do with it back underneath here because there ain't no room for diddly. Oh yeah, you like my hat style right now? Better be careful with this sucker sideways. I do one of these, I probably look like I'm gonna be in the 80s getting ready to break dance you. Let me just reholster that before somebody gets hurt. Now y'all know they called me Hop Around Harold. We're gonna shimmy shake our way down in here. Now I fabricated on this piece for hours. Let's see if she fits.
Well, she's in. As long as we end up with room for our slip yoke and uh, everything to clear, we should be good. Hop Round Herald says, uh, earlier, y'all heard me say I got a disc, disc, proportioning valve. Also, you can see we ain't got no rear brakes yet. Well, don't take no rocket scientist to see what's going on around here. We're about to rebuild the drums, and then I'm going to have to put on the disc uh, drum proportioning valve. Just playing. Uh, I did order a disc brake kit for this, guys. And it's crazy, because by the time you price everything, get new drums and all that, you know, all that stuff. And then a disc brake kit at like $400. We're spending like an extra couple hundred bucks. Uh, but it's one heck of an upgrade. And a big old long wagon like this that you may throw your family in, you want it to be able to stop on a dime. It still had drums in that old master cylinder and she'd stop on a half dollar. Welcome back to another unboxing. The parking brake cable action. Getting fancy. Some brackets and other brackets and retaining brackets and spacers. Now the disc brake swap was a last minute idea or we would have mocked it all up on jack stands. Also, I failed to mention that uh, this rear center chunk will be getting rebuilt. I want 373 gears. I think these things came factory with 336 and that ain't a big difference, but I've had this same drivetrain in a 64 four door before and it works perfect with 373s. It no likey the 336s. I think my right eye just quit working for a second. <laughs> What in the slide hammer situation we got going on here? Guys, last night, uh, dang mosquito hawks everywhere. You walk through my, I, I ain't even grass, that's all clover. They just fly everywhere. Our retaining plate right here's got four studs, but this axle is stuck. Don't matter how I pried or hammered, it ain't coming out. If you need specialty tools, usually your parts house will uh, rent them out to you if they got them, then you take them back and get your money back. Muffs and gloves for this job. Oh, I think it moved. Oh yeah, it's working. Boom, baby. Sometimes you just gotta have the right tool for the job. I ain't saying we couldn't figure out a way, but that was definitely worth uh, driving over to get that thing. Oh, uh-huh. Pop out the old parking brake cable. Now what about this? This should just pop off, right? Except it's nice and rusty. There's one back in plate. Now more or less we're going for a mock-up on this because uh, it says it'll shove the wheels out an eighth inch, right? Yeah, an eighth inch. Uh, so this spacer here, you put this on, that's going to take up the thickness of what the backing plate used to do in there. Our bracket will go on the back side. So on our keeper plate, we need to get the studs out of here. Well, I'll accept that one because they literally send you three bolts for each side and you just reuse the one, I reckon. Twenty-four millimeter do the job. I promise this is gonna get more attention. These bearings can't have very many miles on them considering this car was on the road for nine years. However, being self-sealed, uh, the chances of the seals being the greatest probably ain't the best. Got all that back. Now we need to put our bracket on the back side and run them other bolts through. Well, 
Well, we're rubbing. Right there on that little hump. Get the handheld mill out because we got to do some custom machine work. Quick little notch action. It's gonna need a little more to go all the way flush. Tapered her a little bit with the slice and dice. Quick little clean up with the zip zipper. Whatever you call that damn thing. Oh yeah, that's flush. This side is also hitting as well though. Just a little smoochy kiss. Oh yeah, that's money. There it is, there's the big roadblock. So I noticed on their listing that they talked about make sure your axle flange whatever's X amount wide, right? Then right here it says, you will need to modify your axles if they will not fit inside the rotor hat. Well, sitting on there wonky because it ain't going all the way flush. And it ain't going all the way flush because inside here is hitting out here. Now I know it had warnings on there that said you should uh, you make sure this is measured that. They sold it as a kit for this car. Uh, they should be a little more honest and be like, hey, we know you're going to have, how many different axle sizes is there available for this thing or flame sizes? Just tell us guys. We're going to have to trim these axles as much as slick trim that old hair off his head. <laughs> they just pulled up, looked like a 12 year old boy pulled up in the love. <laughs> Oh, baby. Will these fit? Yeah. Tuck that on there real quick. Real deal. Oh, oh shit. Getting shot at. <laughs> real deal magnesium? Mm -hmm. Weighs well, freaking half a pound. That's crazy. Right. Get the saws all out and take them quarters clean off and we'll be good to go. <laughs> there goes old Slicky Poo and Matthew. Our best bet right now is to find some bearings for this thing where we, we can get them coming on order or whatever. Cause it's looking like we can just go ahead and rebuild the axles. And when we have them all torn apart, we'll go have them machined down a little bit somewhere. I was hoping to have everything mocked back up where we could set it down to end the video. And uh, I was also hoping to get our one brake line on our proportioning valve. But unfortunately one crap happens. Two, they didn't have the tube nut I needed at the parts house. And three, uh, kind of, like crap happens i just i lost about probably 12 or 14 hours that i would uh, usually get out here working this week to make progress due to stuff like doctor's appointments and crap like that this week so it is what it is uh, this is where we made it and yeah so i appreciate you guys watching uh appreciate all the support the views the comments the likes the people who choose to support through merchandise uh update for people who's ordered last week Guys, it was just a lot. So a lot is going out. Uh, first thing this Monday, coming up Monday morning, or today, this morning. The, the day this video posted, that morning, a lot should have went out to the post office. Uh, we're trying to keep that all caught up and keep y'all happy. So if you ordered you one of those or the shirts or the hats, expect that baby coming in soon. And of course, all the other merchandise. Uh, big thank y'all for the support there. And what else? I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon, and that's it, guys. I got to go spend a little bit of evening time with the, the kiddos. Got to enjoy this beautiful weather. Tonight, we got to get back to editing to get this video wrapped up. Tomorrow, we got all kinds of stuff going on with the church. So I will see you guys next time, and do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project.